Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to use Flash in order to create a uh, really simple animation using a sound effect. So I'm going to use a, uh, a hammering sound effect, and I'll make a, a hammer that's hammering in a nail into a piece of wood. So I've got a blink Flash file kind of set up and ready to go here. I've already got it saved, but I haven't done anything to it. And I do want to point out where I'm getting my sound file. So I'm over at uh, PacDV Free Sound Effects, and I went over to their mechanical category for sound effects. It's packdv.com. And I found, and it's just below my scroll here, but basically there's a hammering sound. And if I click it, there we go. One, two, three, four makes a little hammering sound. So what I did is I simply right clicked on that sound file and I saved it to my computer. And my sound file, let me zoom out here, is right over here. So I've already got my, my file saved to my desktop. And I've also got the um, my Flash file saved over here to my desktop, too. So let me jump over to Flash and get started here. Now I'm on my main scene, my main stage. I'm going to go ahead and insert a new symbol, and I'm going to create a movie clip symbol called um, Hammer and Nail. And it's a movie clip symbol. And this is going to be made up of several layers, and we can, of course, always add more a little bit layer later. But um, I think I'm going to have about five layers. My top layer, I'm just going to do a simple little stop action. So I'm going to have an actions over there. Um, the layer below that, I'll have my uh, my sound effect. And let's see, I'm going to need, of course, a uh, hammer. And there's going to be a piece of wood. And I need a nail. And these are actually already in a pretty good sequence, or good layering, but if they weren't, I would simply rearrange. I want the nail to be behind the wood, and I guess technically the hammer doesn't have to be there, but I've got my hammer there, sound effect, so I've got the different things going on. Uh, my wood is just going to be a static object, so I think I'll go ahead and lock down everything, and let me just create the piece of wood. So I'm just going to use a uh, rectangle tool. I've already got a black outline. Um, let me just up the stroke a little bit and then I'll just use a uh, brownish color and I'll just draw the little wood a little bit to the left left of center there we go so there's a, a piece of wood and I can uh, let's see I don't know how long I'm gonna have this last I'll have it last let's see we're doing 24 frames per second I don't want it to go too long because I want it to be kind of a fast action. So it looks like my visible out to 45. So I'll just go out to 45 since that's visible on my screen here. So for the wood, I'll just go ahead and go out to frame 45 and I'll press F5 to continue that frame. So now my wood object, my wood character is going to be displayed all the way through 45 frames. So not quite two seconds, but close enough. All right, so I'm good with that. So I can lock down the wood layer. And I'm going to go ahead and take a second to draw the nail. So I'll go to frame one for my nail. And I'm not very good with the art, but uh, I'll try to muddle through here. I'll just use that same black stroke. I'll use a pen tool here real quick. And I'll just draw my nail off to the side for a moment. See, so I'll start with a point. Run up there. Let's see, I'll do a... Uh, a little bit of a curve, anchor, flat top there, jump down about here, so a little Bezier curve, click there, anchor, and down to the point, close it off. So that's my nail. It's a little bit askew, but that gives it character. I'll just do a little bit of straightening up there, Can I bend that over a bit, bring that in a bit. Straighten that out. There we go. So that's kind of my nail there. I'll use my free transform tool just to kind of... There we go. A little bit straighter, but good enough. I'll use my fill over here, and I'll make a uh, gray nail. Oops. There we go. Takes care of that. And I'm going to start off by positioning this nail just above the wood, right there. Okay, so in the beginning of my animation, the nail is going to be just above the wood. Here, I'll just tap it in just a little bit. Oops, I didn't get my stroke in there. Let me select that. Just sink it in just a little bit, so maybe you just pressed it in a little. All right, so that takes care of the nail. Now, the nail is going to be getting pressed into the wood throughout this animation, but I think I'm going to use a frame-by-frame frame for that. I'll use a motion tween for the hammer, and then I'll use a frame-by-frame frame for the nail actually getting pressed into the wood. 
So I'm pretty good with this one. And for the nail, I could go ahead and have that. I'll just jump out to frame 45, and I'll press um, F5 to continue. So that's taking care of that for now. I'll be coming back to the nail, though, pretty soon. So now, here we go, put my art skills to the test. I have to draw a hammer now, so let me just give my... I'll work off to the side. It's the only layer I have unlocked, and I'm going to draw a hammer. Let's see, I'll use my uh, pen tool again, and I'll start here, click, click, click with the pen tool. Um, I'll jump over here. I'm using the bezier to kind of make the claw part. Anchor, click, there we go. Got the top part there. Anchor, click, click, and close it off. There we go. And then I'll just use my uh, selection tool and see if I can't clean this up just a bit. And I don't want to bend that in. I want to use my control key. Let's see here. There we go. So I'm just holding down my control key while I press these in. I'll just kind of angle those in like that. Drop that in. Lower the curve. I have no idea really what I'm doing here. It's not like I am a hammer expert, but I think that's good enough for government work. So I'm going to draw a line here. We'll just make the little grip for the handle or for the hammer. I think that's good enough. Use my fill bucket. Use a brown for the lower part there. And I don't know, a very light gray for the top part. Good enough. So there's the hammer, and I can tell already that the scale of my hammer to the nail is pretty off, so I will use my free transform tool. Let me zoom out just a bit here. And I'm going to make this hammer just a little bit bigger. And I'll just kind of position it up here a little bit. Good enough at the moment. Um, so that I can kind of get the scaling and the position right for this hammer, what I'm going to do is I still have my free transform tool active. I'm going to go ahead and take the rotation point, which is the little circle right there in the middle, and I'm going to drag that down to near the end of the handle. So now when I rotate this hammer, I can see that it's going to pivot right at that handle point. And now that I can see that, I'm going to put my hammer down at a horizontal angle, and then I can position it so it's, it's getting roughly where I want it to be. So now if I rotate this hammer up, and there we go, I can see it up here like this and I'll know now when I rotate it down it'll kind of stroke th go through the hammer and I can see it's going to be kind of at a bad point because ultimately I want to hammer this all the way into the wood now if you're being really fancy you could be drawing a stick figure and the hammer could actually be getting a little bit lower at the time so I might have to take care of that too but I think it's pretty good for now so we'll we'll just kind of move the hammer a little bit as it's striking the nail okay but otherwise I'm pretty happy with that so I got a hammer got a nail got a piece of wood now the hammer, I'm going to do a motion tween on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my frame 1 and create a motion tween. I'll drag this out to frame 45. And I'm going to kind of hold off on there for a second. Go ahead and lock that down. Let me go to my sound effect. Now for my sound effect, I, I want to get that sound effect into my library. And you really can't see my library right now. But it is off over here to the side. I've got my hammer and nail. And there's my... Uh, the graphic hammer which was created this symbol one for my hammer was created when I did the motion tween so things are going pretty normal there but I want to import my sound so a couple ways I could do this quite easily I could check this out I can just kinda if I can see my sound file there I can just drag it right on here and that's gonna import it. so let me give it a quick second oops already did it and if I scroll back now my uh, my mp3 of my hammer sound is now available on my uh, in my library and I can play it here there we go so I can see it's got those four hammer strikes and then I'll go to frame one which is a keyframe for my sound effect and all I have to do is take my sound file and just drag it anywhere on my working area or stage and do that and what's happened it's hard to tell but there's now a sound wavelength here if I go out to frame 45 and press F5 for a continuation you'll see my little wavelength and I can also do this I can right click on my sound effect layer go to properties and I'll change the layer height to like 200 percent so my sound effect layer is now taller than my other layers and I can see those sound wavelengths 
And that's going to come in handy because this is going to let me know when the hammer needs to be striking the nail because that's when the sound is produced. So it's kind of nice having those wavelengths there. Okay, so things are going pretty good. And I'm actually kind of done with this sound effect layer right now. So I can go ahead and then turn that off. Or I'm sorry, not turn it off. Lock it down. And now I want to work on getting the hammer strikes. And this is going to be pretty easy because I know exactly when the hammer needs to be doing the down motion. When it's going to hit the, the apex of the down motion is right when it's making that sound. So I'll just click on the frames right not right at the very beginning, but close enough. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And I can use my less than or greater than signs. Oops, there we go. And I can jump frame by frame. There it is, less, just using those directionals. So I say, oh, that's too soon. But I'll say right there. And that's when my hammer needs to be at a downward point. So I'll make sure my free transform tool is on. And check this out. I'll just simply lower this hammer. Actually, I think I've got a little screw up here. Let me control Z real quick. Let's see. So there's my hammer at the beginning. Oh, I got to return my focal point. I think that's pretty good. So let's try this again. Let me just click on this frame. And I need to move my rotation point there again. I'm going to rotate this hammer down. And I'm just going to go just beneath the nail head. That's perfectly fine just beneath the nail head for that first hammer stroke. Now halfway in between the first sound and the second sound I'm gonna raise this hammer up and then at the next sound see right about there I guess I want this hammer to come down again. I'm actually gonna lower the entire hammer and I'm just gonna use the down arrow on my keyboard a little bit and then I'll also rotate a bit more so there's the hammer down a little bit further in between the two hammer strike sounds. I'll raise the hammer up and then at the next hammer strike, let's see, let's see if you can get it right there, um, I'll lower the hammer. I'm just pressing my down arrow key again and then I'll put the hammer strike right about there. In between the sounds, rotate the hammer up and at the last hammer strike, Lower the hammer just a little bit more. And then this time the hammer head is going to hit all the way down to the wood because that's going to be the final strike there. And then after that sound, I will simply just rotate the hammer up. Okay? So that we can finally see the finished work. So that'll take care of the hammer strikes. And if I press my enter key here, let's try this again. There we go. So that's when to get those hammer strikes. Now, I'm going to lock that down and go to the nail layer, okay? Um, by the way, I'm going to do this too. I'm going to wireframe my hammer so I can just see the outline of it. So I'm just clicking the outline option. Oops, cancel that. So just pressing this, the outline. I'm going to go to my nail, unlock that. And for this one, I'm just going to use a frame by frame. And, I, and I'm just going to kind of click at different points right where I'm getting close here. So I'm going to go frame uh, advance and let me use my greater than sign here. And I see at this point my nail needs to be a little bit lower. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press F6 to make a keyframe. Oops, I was at the wrong spot actually. It's okay that I have a keyframe there though. I'll go to the next frame. F6 to make a keyframe and I'm just going to use my down arrow and I'm going to push my nail just so it's beneath the hammer head. And then at the next frame, it's up, so everything's fine. So now I'll go to the next hammer strike sound, and I see right about here, okay, so it turns out to be my frame 13. My nail, my hammer head is striking down, so I need to press F6 to make a keyframe. And I'm just going to knock that nail a little bit further down. Everything's good from there. The next hammer strike. There, okay, so at frame 24, things are looking okay. But at frame, I'm sorry, that frame 20, at frame 21, I'm going to press F6. Bring that hammer, or I'm sorry, bring the nail a little bit further down so it's just below the hammer head. Things are looking good. And the last hammer strike, 
I need to press F6, keyframe it, and I need to get that nail all the way through the wood, or maybe just maybe just the top edge of it might be exposed there. That's fine. So things are looking better. So I can turn the wireframe off, so I can see things. How's this looking? Yeah, not too bad. So now we're getting that hammer just striking the nail going through the wood. And if I go back to my main scene, I can take my hammer and nail movie clip symbol. Let me zoom out just a little bit here so I can see things better. So I can kind of see my stage. I'll take my hammer and nail movie clip symbol, pop that on there. I'm going to scale it down a bit. Oops. There we go. Position it like that. And then control enter for the preview. And there's a hammer striking the nail. The only thing I didn't do, and I guess it's really not necessary, so I'm probably not going to take care of it, but I was thinking about doing an action up here where I just did a stop action at the very end, so that would keep it from looping. So basically all I was going to do was go to that um, actions layer, frame 45. I was going to press um, F6 to make a keyframe, actions, and I was just going to put in a simple stop action. So it basically would force this this to stop. So if I go back to my scene and test it out now, it stops right there. All right, well, I hope you have fun with that. And play around, go grab some sound files. And what, I'll, what you'll find, I think, is when you start looking at different sound files, that'll give you some ideas for little animations that you can create. So find some cool sound files, make little animations that correspond with them, and then you've got sound with animation. Take care.